Lately, I've been studying some compressor schematics. I'm not an electronics guy, but I've been trying to understand them a little more to kind of understand what do compressors really do and how do they really work. And one of the things that was interesting to me was I was watching a video on the schematic of an 1176. And in the video, he was talking about how the ratio control doesn't actually control the ratio of an 1176. And I started wondering, is that really what's happening? So I thought, hey, let's do some experimenting and find out. So today this video is gonna be pretty conceptual. You can watch this on a smartphone or a tablet or something with a really crappy speaker. It's, it's fine, we're not gonna be doing any audio demos, I'm just gonna demonstrate some concepts for you to kind of help you understand how some equipment works. So what is ratio on a compressor? Well, basically the ratio control is what dictates how hard our compressor actually works. I've seen a lot of engineers confuse threshold and ratio, and threshold is really more about what part of our signal we wanna compress, while the ratio is how hard is that compressor actually gonna work. So for example, do we want to just, you know, affect the very loudest bits of a signal, like let's say we're working on a final mix and we wanna put a limiter on it just to, to make sure we don't have any peaks that go over. Well, with that, we're gonna have a, a threshold that's set pretty high so that it's only going to work on the loudest bits. But maybe on the other hand, we've got a vocal that's really dynamic. We wanna really kind of control it and level it out. For something like that, we're gonna to wanna to use a much lower threshold because we're gonna want that compressor to work on more of our signal to level it more. What does ratio actually mean? Four to one, eight to one, two to one. We see these numbers and numbers, numbers aren't a lot of fun for me anyways. So ratio simply is the amount of decibels above our threshold that go in to the compressor versus the amount of decibels that actually come out. So let me just demonstrate that here. I have the Avid Pro Compressor here today and I picked this guy for this quick demonstration because this seemed to be the most mathematically accurate of all the compressors that I had. So I have a signal generator down here. It's just setting a 1K tone in. We're not gonna listen to this because it would be awful to listen to, but just so that we can put some signal in and make the thing work and kind of really control how it works. So our signal is set at neg 20. Our threshold is at neg 20. Our ratio is at four to one. We can see the input into our compressor is neg 20. The output is neg 20. If I set the level going into it to 16, watch what happens on input and output. So we get an input of neg 16. Our output is neg 19. Basically, we've gone 4 dB above our threshold, and we're gonna get one dB out. Hopefully that makes sense. So four to one, four dB in equals one more dB out. So it's still an output above where the level was, but it's not getting as loud. If I set this to eight to one and set this to neg 12, again, our output stays at 19 and our input is neg 12. So 8 dB above our threshold gives us 1 dB above that output. So let's talk about the 1176. I'm gonna use a CLA 76, which is an 1176 emulation by Waves that is a faithful recreation of one of Chris Lord Algae's 1176s. In the video that I watched on the 1176, he said that the ratio control isn't actually a ratio control. It's actually a threshold control. And I can demonstrate that. He's, he was accurate on this. If we turn up, so we're getting some gain reduction. I'll just set it so we're getting about 7 dB of gain reduction. Watch what happens when I, when I click different ratios. It's going lower 
in terms of how much gain reduction. That's because our threshold is going higher. Now, if we look at the pro compressor, let's watch what happens when I turn the ratio higher on that. As I go higher on the ratio, we actually see the attenuation increase. We get more attenuation. If we go back to the 1176, though, as I go higher with the ratio, we're actually seeing less attenuation. That's because the ratio control on an 1176 does actually adjust the internal threshold in the compressor. But the real question I had was, does it still work like a ratio control? What I've set up here is a signal generator with our 1K tone, and it's basically feeding into a bunch of different auxes, so they're all getting the exact same signal coming in, and I've set up a bunch of different compressors. I've set up four different CLA-76s. Each one of them is at a different ratio, and then I've got some other compressors that we can look at to compare afterwards. So let's look at all of these 1176s first. So all of these are set to different ratios, and you can see the ratio control. Now, if the ratio control doesn't affect the ratio or the amount of gain reduction that's happening, then it should stay consistent on all of these units as I turn up the level. Because what I went in and did on all of these compressors is I basically adjusted all the controls so that I turned them up so that I was just getting a little bit of gain reduction and then I adjusted them backwards. So right now they're all set up with different input settings and output settings and that's because of the the way the threshold works inside the 1176s or CLA-76. I don't know exactly where it's set, but basically this will make them all have an equivalent threshold relative to this particular signal. So let's watch what happens as I turn up the level of my signal going into these. If the ratio doesn't actually control the ratio, we should say, see the same amount of gain reduction on all of them. Watch. All right, so already I'm doing 3 dB of gain reduction on the 4 to 1. I'm getting more than that on the 8 to 1. Similar on the 12 to 1, and the 20 to the 1 is, is getting a little bit more than that. But each one of these is getting more gain reduction as the ratio increases. Let's put more level in and watch what happens. So now... With the 4 to 1, it's 7 dB of gain reduction. We're getting closer to 10. That's probably around 9, I'm guessing. Well, maybe 8 or 9, just moved. Down here on the 12 to 1, we've got 10. This is getting close to 10. If we go even more, we can see that we get even more. So, Basically, the idea that the ratio control doesn't control the ratio of the compressor, I think it's kind of busted here. It does definitely control compression to a certain extent. Maybe not exactly mathematically accurate. So just for giggles, let's look at our 1176 versus the, the Pro Comp. So 1176 is a 4 to 1 ratio. The pro comp is set at, well, let's set it at 4 to 1. So we've got the same ratio on both of these. They're both doing the same amount of attenuation right now. Let's see what happens when I adjust it. So let's just, let's go deep. So I've got 7 dB of gain reduction on the 1176. We're getting neg 7.5 on the pro comp. That's... That seems pretty comparable. If I go to 8 to 1, let's see. I'll set that to do 7. And we'll set this to 8 to 1. Well, now we're getting a lot more attenuation on the Pro Comp. Closer to 10 dB. This one is right around 7. So the ratios in... Our CLA 76, they're not exactly spot on, according to math.
but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, what really matters is how do these things sound? And the way I think about this is how much work do I really want the compressor to do? Do I want it to really clamp down on things and really control things, really limit things? Or do I want it to let something breathe a little more, but still work on it a little bit? So one of the things I've said a lot of times is I really kind of lean towards four to one for a lot of things. So that's usually where I leave it set. Your mileage may vary. You may like a higher ratio. It's up to you. There's not a right or wrong answer on this. But I thought, you know, something that would be interesting to look at now is how does this four to one on the CLA 76 compared to some other compressors. For example, let's look at the CLA 2A. I've heard that CLA 2As are kind of about a four to one ratio. So let's push into it and see what happens. If I set it to about three dB on the CLA 2A, we're getting a little more than that on the CLA 76. If we go, Neg seven on the CLA 76 is about, probably about neg six. So that 2A, it's fairly close in ratio to what a four to one CLA 76 is. What about a Puig child? 3 dB on a Puig child of gain reduction, we're getting close to six dB. So this is gonna be a lower ratio. Let's, Let's open up our pro comp and let's let's see. So if this Puig child is getting about 3 dB of gain reduction, I'm gonna adjust the ratio on the pro comp to get about 3 dB. Wow, that's about so right here, it's about a 1.5 to 1 ratio. That's a really soft ratio. But let's see what happens if we, if we lay into this. Because one of the things with some of these classic compressors is the ratio is not constant throughout the operation of the compressor. Some compressors, the deeper you get into them, it changes. So let's see what happens if I do 7 dB on the Pro Comp. Again... Let's turn this up to about neg seven. So now I'm at about two to one on the pro comp. If we go to 10 dB of gain reduction, I need to use a setting of, whoops, right around there. So now we're at 2.3, a little bit more. But you can see that the, the Puig child it's a pretty soft knee. The deeper in to gain reduction you go, it's kind of doing a little more work on our signal. And that's probably why people really like these. It's such a gentle, soft compression. Um, I wonder if we change the time constant, does that affect it? No. Nope. Sometimes, sometimes controls do weird things on compressors. Let's look at another one here is the new RS-124 compressor. Here, I'll set it to, let's set it for about five dB of gain reduction. So it's 2.7, close to three to one ratio, according to this. Um, if we go deeper into it, let's see what happens. If we we hit this with 10 dB of gain reduction. Now it's 3.5. So again, pretty soft knee compressor, I think, because the harder we hit it, the more reduction we're getting. It's not just a solid ratio for the whole operation of the compressor. Anyways, I hope that helps clarify the ratio on a compressor for you a little bit and how the ratio buttons work on an 1176 style compressor. If you found this helpful, please share it with your friends. I think that's always one of the best ways that you can help people find new content. If 
You want to find out more about me, you can visit my website at www.goingto11.com. I have articles I've written up there. There are podcast episodes up there. And if you want to find out about some of the training services and coaching and consulting services that I provide for engineers and churches and other organizations, you can look at them there and send me an email if you want to find out more. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.